Well, hello everyone and welcome to a very wintry episode of Wildgy Garden where it is currently snowing, as you can see. Now, I know this isn't unheard of for March, but certainly here in the UK we've been hit by a rather cold spell. So, yes, a few days of this, I believe. So it's kind of put paid to the renovation works I've been carrying out on this wildlife pond I'm looking to enlarge an existing wildlife pond that I created 13 years ago in this one acre site that you may have seen videos on in the past where it, in summertime, trust me, is an absolute blaze of colour. It's just under an acre, as I say, and it is very, very unique for wildlife. It is home to, well, it certainly had visitors from 30 species of butterfly. It's got three species of orchids. It is florally diverse as breeding warblers. It's fantastic. Anyway, in today's video, I want to talk to you about the top tips you can do in your garden in March to help wildlife. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So tip number one, keep feeding your birds. Now I know some of you may be saying, well, we shouldn't be feeding birds. It's almost coming into the breeding season. And yes, towards the end of March, certainly, and into April, birds will be building nests and no doubt starting to have young. And when they do have that young, the best food source they can provide for the young is of course, fresh meals in terms of caterpillars and insects and anything they can find in the wider countryside which is of course what they've done for millennia however in particularly here in the UK in these cold spells it's absolutely fine to keep feeding and the only problem with feeding when you are feeding all through the year which I do do which you can do is not to feed whole peanuts because whole peanuts can get stuck in the chick's throat and it can choke them so if you're going to feed try and use a mix that either a hasn't got any peanuts in it or b has sort of granular peanuts crushed peanuts that are really fine um, then at least that way it's not going to affect the young but as i say one of the best things you can do is provide a food source naturally for them so by planting native trees and shrubs to where you are around the world will provide caterpillars spiders and many other insects which of course is how many 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 millions of birds are reared every year thanks to their very uh, loyal parents. So yes, number one is keep feeding the birds. And obviously if you're in the UK and you're after the perfect bird seed mix, we do have it available on the Wild Your Garden online shop. A blend that I've had specially made, which will cater for all uh, feeders and as a ground feed mix as well. So it's a whole mix of foods that I've tried and tested over the many, many years, and it really does work. So do have a look on the online shop if you're looking to buy some bird seed. So yes, number one, keep feeding the birds. Number two, and while we're on the subject of birds, I would say it's still not too late to put some bird boxes up. So if you've been thinking about it all winter and you just haven't got around to doing it yet, don't despair. You can still put them up and I would just keep putting them up. I mean, I do put them up all year round. If they get used, bonus. If they don't, then hey, I'm sure they'll get used the next year. So keep putting the nest boxes up obviously we do have those available also on the wild garden online shop and like i say get them up until the end of march even then the you know birds won't quite be nesting they'll be pairing up certainly now um, if they're not already and they'll be well they'll have already had their territory set most of the birds particularly the robins singing here they're very very territorial birds no doubt they'll already have their territory set but yes obviously birds such as in the uk blue tit great tit robin starling house sparrow um, swallow swift house martin all these birds pied wagtail you can cater for and you can build boxes for a lot of birds will prefer a natural nest so things like goldfinches greenfinches chaffinches um, they'll build their own nests usually sort of towards the ends of branches amongst dense vegetation um, possibly in sort of medium to larger trees but most birds will want to actually build within a they're a whole nesting bird a lot of birds are anyway um, and even things like blackbirds you can cater for because you can actually put discrete ledges wedge them into some climbers against a fence or something like that and blackbirds will use that flat platform to then build their nest on top of um, so yes number two is keep putting those bird boxes up number three please, please, please resist the urge to cut all your herbaceous borders back if you haven't already done so. There will still be, especially in times like this, ladybirds, overwintering larvae and all sorts of insects and grubs hiding out in your longer vegetation 
within your herbaceous borders towards the edges of your grass if you've left any shrubby sort of scrubby areas then they will of course be certainly hibernating in these colder conditions um, so yes please if you can try and refrain from cutting back all your dead stems your hollow stems they're perfect hideouts for many many insects and yes they really are a refuge at this time of year so if you can try and keep those in the garden until sort of april when things hopefully <laughs> warm up a bit um, because the, as i say they will provide a vital refuge for a lot of wildlife at this time of year and obviously by having those insects there you're still then providing the food the natural food as we've just spoken about for the birds things like long-tailed tits and wrens of course um, i mean i know in the states you guys watching this over there you'll have your carolina wren um, which i have seen and they are magnificent birds like a giant version of our um, sort of eurasian wren and um, they will of course be hunting through all little log stacks and you know they'll be hanging underneath your windowsills pecking spiders off and under the long tail tits as i say as well any sort of uh, smaller birds like that will be hunting for insects through these kind of longer vegetation areas so yes number three is leave your vegetation alone <laughs> don't cut it back just yet Number four, get planting those trees and shrubs. Now, if you haven't undertaken any structural changes in the garden just yet, and you want to include a few more native trees and shrubs, now is a great time to do so. You can still take advantage of the cheaper price of the bare root specimens that you can get in the UK and indeed all around the world, where you can plant them in your garden now. And now is a perfect time. Up until the end of March, they are available. So last orders guys if you're looking to buy any bare root trees shrubs get on the wilder garden online shop and get hold of some <coughs> excuse me while they are still available obviously as i say they are available until the end of march so there's two and a bit weeks left so yes number four is to get some native trees and shrubs in your garden because then you can start thinking about the the understory if you like all the wildflowers that might go around that all your herbaceous perennials get the structure right in your garden at this time of year and then you can work your way down in height so aim to have you know taller stuff at the back of a border shorter stuff at the front so it gets the most light so yes number four bare root trees and shrubs pull your finger out and get some in your garden number five now if you're looking to create an area within your garden that is um some annual wildflowers so things like poppy corn marigold corn cockle corn chamomile um, then now is a great time once the snow clears to start preparing your ground so obviously rotivating and getting the ground ready and then you can snow once we get out of the cold sap so equally i would say if you're looking to sow any seeds within your garden you can sow in the spring obviously autumn is usually preferable but you can sow in the spring but i just wait until we've got a window of warmer weather usually I do my spring sowings towards the end of March and even into the first couple of weeks of April, just so that we kind of go past, hopefully, fingers crossed, the worst risk, risk of any cold snaps like this, which is obviously a really good example of why you shouldn't be sowing your outdoor seeds too early. Obviously, it's different in a greenhouse, but where they are outside, if they start germinating and then they start coming up, um, the frost can really knock them back so yes it's best to just hold off a little while longer but as i say march is a great time to get in the garden prepare your ground turn it over pull out all the roots and stones that you don't want and get the area clear in preparation for then sowing obviously in april well say end of march and into early april and obviously if you're looking for any wildflower seed mixes again the online shop i'm really trying not to make this a video about the online shop but obviously it's the whole reason I set that shop up is to help you guys out to put everything in one place so that you can get everything you need to help wildlife within your own garden. So check it out. We've got a, a whole range of, of mixtures with grasses and wildflowers and also annuals separately. Annuals, they just come up and live their life cycle within a year and then die. Perennials, things such as your oxide daisies, your bird's foot truffle, your red clover. Obviously, they are perennials, so they'll come back year after year. But either way, now is a great time to prepare your ground so get out there and get digging when this lot's cleared through so number six as the snow gets heavier <laughs> if you're looking to do any major pruning works in your garden if you're looking to coppice some of your existing shrubs or prune back any of your fruit trees trim any of your bushes then now is the time up until the end of march when obviously the birds will start migrating into your bushes and shrubs and everything else to start nesting so 
if you've got any cutting back to do in the garden any last minute stuff or any major stuff indeed it's best to get it done by the end of march and then obviously you can just let things go because through april the birds will be nesting and obviously everything will be wanting to flower and all the rest of it so yes the next tip as i say is to get all your trimming works done the snow is getting pretty heavy now <laughs> your trimming and your cutting works and obviously as a, a bonus point within this tip don't get rid of all that all that cutting and everything else all those cuttings and all the branches don't shred them up <clears throat> cut them up and make some brash stacks throughout your garden they are absolutely brilliant and a lot of birds including uh, blackbirds black caps um robins wrens dunnocks they will all nest in stacks of brash so brash stacks are really really good like a dead hedge if you like or make some dead hedges in your garden um <clears throat> it's really two or three points to be honest but <laughs> hey I, let just don't just recycle everything the whole point of a wildlife garden is you should be able to keep everything within your garden so you don't have to keep throwing it in the green bin and getting it taken away or whatever so just keep it in the garden make some brash stacks and you'll be amazed at just how much life is attracted to these areas so number seven and my final tip before i get buried in snow is get a pond in your garden i know you might think it's blindingly obvious and believe it or not a lot of people ask me when is the best time to dig a pond can i dig a pond in winter the answer is i'm making ponds 12 months of the year so get one dug in your garden now it's a perfect time it's a really great time because you can um, get everything ready get it lined and fleeced and all the subsoil in and obviously if you're looking to create a wildlife pond then do check out the three-part series i've done on the channel of how to make your own wildlife pond and it's a really good time as i say because you can get the groundworks in obviously when you've got less snow on the ground but you can get the groundworks in you can get everything dug and get it ready get it lined fleece lined fleece subsoiled up ready for all the plants to become available obviously we do sell the wild flowers you need to go in around the wet margins the lilies the oxygenators everything you need is again guys on the wild your garden online shop most of it will be coming available as we get into april so at least in march if you get it all dug get it there just just leave it it's not going to go stagnant or anything at this time of year the temperature is still quite low so you shouldn't have any major algal blooms and obviously if you can fill it up with rainwater as opposed to or let it fill naturally if we get a lot of rain throughout march you might not even have to put a tap on which is obviously better because you you haven't got all the the nitrates and everything within the water so it's far better if you can let it fill up naturally so yes number seven is get a wildlife pond in your garden get digging get out there no excuses <laughs> and get one in your garden they are the best thing you can put in your garden for wildlife if you only do one thing this year put a wildlife pond in your garden and if you don't believe me check the wildlife ponds playlist there are millions and millions of reasons why you should get one of these amazing habitats in your own garden and if you can't dig a pond in your garden if you're in rented accommodation or you've just got loads of concrete and or you're not physically able to dig um then get a barrel pond try a barrel pond in your garden because they equally can attract so much wildlife and obviously i've done a how to make a barrel pond as well in the previous video so check out the wildlife ponds playlist on the channel for all the info you need to make one of these magnificent habitats so that's it guys that's my top tips for march hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned a few things today and obviously stick around I've got on Wednesday of next week, I've got the final episode of the French playlist. Some of you are probably saying, thank God, I'm sick of watching all the stuff you've done in France, all the places you've been. But I hope it's been an eye-opening experience for many of you and you've enjoyed seeing the flora and fauna that I've seen over the course of 10 days. And obviously, if you haven't seen that already, do check out the French playlist. Some amazing sights, some amazing wildlife. And indeed, in the last episode, an incredible town for wildlife, which is what I think we should be aiming the benchmark at when we are either creating new towns and, you know, we have existing towns. Um, so, yes, do check out those videos, but I'm going to go before I get frostbite and the end of my fingers and uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. As always, drop the comment, some comments below if you've got any and please feel free to subscribe to the channel. It goes a long, long way and it really helps push these messages so that we can help more people create habitats for wildlife and obviously give the video a like if you've enjoyed it anyway thanks so much stay tuned lots more cool stuff to come guys hope you're well see you all soon
Thank you.